just saw something very interesting. I don't know about you. On the back of our signs it says, please remember you may be on DC TV right now. That is a great warning. Thank you. <laughs> What do they mean by maybe? I mean, it should be definitely. Right, right. right? Yeah, since I, I don't, any little mild warning is fine by me. <laughs> because I talk mad shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, you're kind of a big deal, so they definitely should put you on TV, that's what I'm saying. Or, allegedly, you've been on television before. A show, maybe you've heard of it. Once or twice. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for coming to Con this year. We're so excited to have you guys. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So to be here. Well, and Julie and Jay August have been here before, but this is Todd and Emma's first Dragon Con. Be gentle. No, oh, don't be. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's a joke. That was her. <laughs> We like lame jokes here. That's how, we, that's how we function. So, how are you enjoying our convention so far? Are you talking to me? <laughs> All of us. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you. We're we'll gonna let the newbies take it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm loving it. It's been crazy. And apparently this isn't crazy. Really, tomorrow's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, no, it's fun. It's fun looking at all the costumes and the amount of just work that people put into getting dressed up. I'm impressed. It's really, I Make it. couldn't do any of what you're doing. She's just talking about me and Julie. <laughs> Joking. I am in awe. I saw a man in a t-shirt with a coconut. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> it's a wrestling thing. <laughs> Sometimes a coconut is just a coconut. coconat. Yeah. <laughs> Did it have a straw in it? Because then it was oh. a drink. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a big orb. Oh. Mm. oh. Okay. Anybody know what that was? <laughs> you see, I'm not Maybe he's at the wrong con. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I saw Santa Claus, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's a Jesus different car. <laughs> I need to talk to Jesus later. This a lady is a big talk too. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a guy, and I thought this was brilliant. He's he came as the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Brilliant. Yeah, I want to borrow it. <laughs> So if you were coming to con as a con goer and not as a guest, what costume would you have either have made for you or make for yourself? Uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. I have the underwears. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to walk around as Wonder Woman. I don't know. Bonnie! I assume you were a neighbor. It's Fluffy Bunny. Yeah, I think it's a little too meta. I think maybe something. I don't like a like Aquaman. Nobody likes Aquaman. But I know I'm a chick, and that doesn't make any sense. I'd have to pick something. I know. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's no gender brother. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was. I don't know what I was thinking. I I like I like those characters. I love Flash Gordon. No, 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 Ripley. That's who I be. Yeah. <laughs> I've got no idea. I, I would probably dress up as the most popular person I know, which would be Joss Whedon. Gosh, I'd probably come dressed up as Luke Skywalker, because when we were kids and we'd play Star Wars, they never let me be Luke. I always had to be Lando. So I'd probably satisfy that thing right there. Um, but I just got into Game of Thrones, so if I was really feeling brave, I'd be, uh, and this is my favorite name ever, I would be Daenerys Stormborn. <laughs> I'm joking. I would never dress like that. <laughs> but um, I love that character. Nice.
I can borrow my costume from wardrobe. It'd take too long to put on. <laughs> hey, people take hours getting in their costumes. I think That's you'd be all right. You'd be in good company. Right. So you guys are all a part of something that obviously means a lot to all of us. And, and like, we thank you for the work that you put into it. And just wondering what, um, what it means to you to be part of something that is such a cult phenomenon and, and has survived and continues to grow even after the shows have been off air. You know, I have to tell you, I was a fan of Dark Shadows. That's what got me into the I remember being at a convention just like this for Dark Shadows, sitting in the audience, and the people up there on the panel were sort of saying, well, that was 30 years ago. We were so busy, we didn't even know it was happening while it was happening to us. Now I'm here saying the same thing. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so great when you know the younger generations are discovering it, yeah. and uh, and it just really shows how great the writing was, and what an amazing show it is. And I'm happy to, I would, you know, 30 years from now, I still hope well, I'm alive, <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, I'm still talking about it. Absolutely. I'm going to be very corny because I'm very sentimental and earnest type of person, um, but I will say this: um, in this business, you know, as an actor. You know, there's so many ups and downs, and there's so much that we all go through, you know, in every aspect of the business, honestly. Finding jobs, keeping jobs, you know, the whole deal. So I've never really understood what success meant in this business, but I will tell you, I never feel more successful than when a family comes to my table at one of these and says, you know, we know you from Angel, but the kids know you from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's when I feel like yeah. I've really accomplished something, so. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I, um, I, I, I feel like I attract cult projects in general. <laughs> like, no matter what I seem to do, they all end up being very um, fanatical based. And then I, I, I'm also on the other end of that because I am like, come on. I mean, You're in X, X Files and and um, Star Trek. Come on. I mean, yeah. Uh, they're my happy places. I alternate between, of course, and Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't, I can't binge watch that over and over again because it, it makes me so sad. Um, I feel like I'm, like I'm, like I'm just messed up for a week every time I watch that whole show. Um, but it's it's nice being on both sides. When I was growing up, I, you know, I was always a big fan of these shows, and then I am. I'm a part of shows that people are also fanatical about, and it's a nice, it's weird to be at the same time. I'm still part of them, and, and I'm still the fan. So it's, it's a nice little marriage. I'll tell you one thing that was interesting was watching the internet grow with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was the first time ever that I realized actors and crew members could interact with the fans through the internet with a coded thing. People knew it was really you they were talking to. Yeah. That changed the game. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. You were a verified Twitter before verified Twitters existed. True. Yeah. That bronze board was really That's helpful. Well, that was exactly what I was going to say, because back in that day, if you wanted to know what people were thinking about the episode that just aired, you had to go to the bronze board, because there was no Twitter at that point. Now, if you want to, you know, see people say mean things about you, you just go to <laughs> It's so much easier. Thank God for technology. People can hate on you immediately. Right. Right. So, um, so this one is actually for Todd. So I don't know if all of you are aware of the amazing work that Todd did on Buffy. Um, he, we have two makeup panels with him later this weekend, but oh my God. Definitely. <laughs> So, so many things that we sort of deal with now as sort of iconic, I feel like it came through on Buffy, and I just wanted to know, um, three or six years on Buffy, what do you feel like was your favorite makeup like, that you put together? Say me. Mine. <laughs> well, I did want to mention that Julie was the very first vampire. Yeah! yeah. 
I like to put it, I was the test monkey. The, the, I'm talking the very first. Yes. On the presentation before we did the show. That was my test vampire. Wow. Absolutely. Cool. You know, I don't think it's possible to say that there's a favorite when you're looking at six years, uh, five days a week, 14 hours a day, pumping out monsters. I don't even remember half of it. <laughs> I would say that what appealed to me about the job and the thing that I love the most is being able to do beauty and prosthetics back to back all day long, stretching every skill level that I had. Buffy was like that. You got a script, you got this list of things, and it didn't matter if you were in the middle of a Neanderthal and it was time to do Emma's beauty makeup. Emma sat in her chair, you did the beauty makeup, and that went to set. Then the Neanderthal got finished and went to set. It was, it was constant, just constant. I love that. And period makeups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, um, we're going to take questions from the audience, so if you would like to ask any of them questions. Karen is right in front of this pillar right here, so Hi. you can ask your questions of the, of the whole team here. So if you want to line up right now, we're going to just take questions okay. from you guys. Um, yeah, and if you can line up around this way so that we don't block this whole side here, that would be sweet. Okay. I'm so excited to see you guys. <laughs> I have not seen you guys, and I mean, wow. And I'm so glad. I just watched my first defiance last night. Your first? My first. Yes. Because you were on it, Thank and you. you're the one who, at Dragon Con, when you were here, they asked you about Dexter. And I had never seen Dexter. So you're the one who drew me to Dexter. <laughs> awesome. And you guys just have no idea. I mean, I know that you love Joss Whedon, and I think there are generations yet to discover how smart and how wonderful he was to let people grow up and be adults instead of the same old, same old stuff we see on TV? Does he even have a clue how, <laughs> how he has changed television and make us, uh, make us immune to stupidity? <laughs> because we just love the characters no matter what they're going through. And uh, Julie? Thank you for responding to my tweet on the suit. I'm the one who said your shoes were perfect. And when I got your response, everything. Well, I I love Twitter and and. I love when people tweet me, so it means a lot to me when you tweet me. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I'll teach you. <laughs> I'm not, I'll teach you. I'm known as the social media czar. <laughs> I'm the social media czar. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm a grad student right now, and I just read 100 pages of British literature, and it was awful. So my question is, what do you do when you're reading literature that is just beyond boring and terrible, and how do you make it interesting? And do you have any advice for me on how to get through British literature? <laughs> oh, um, I read a lot, and if it's bad, I put it down and That's I read something. Put it down. <laughs> you can Google all that stuff, by the way. You can find out plot lines, stories. Like, you don't have to actually read it if it's that bad. I'm not encouraging that, though. Go to school, get an education. <laughs> but do you mean if you have to read it? God, I got nothing for you. Yeah. Oh, that's so tough, like Beowulf or something like that. Beowulf rocks. Oh, it does? I can read it. I put it down. <laughs> try again. Okay, I like Oh, like, you know what? I would try. Get a really hot, 
British guy or a British girl to read it to you. No. <laughs> That's what I would there yeah, go. let's have Patrick Stewart read it to you. Now he could make that interesting. <laughs> he could definitely make that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so as a color reader that actors here, how do you make a bad script sound good? Oh God, I'm not that talented. <laughs> I mean, I've been lucky. I've I've gotten a lot of good scripts, but when it's a bad script, I'm bad. I mean, anybody see Locust the Eighth Plague? Like, oh my god. Oh my god. Horrible and bad acting from me. And I just, it's just bad. <laughs> you could not, well, you could not be bad. <laughs> oh no. I was shooting at bugs with a handgun. <laughs> and I think I was rolling my eyes at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely no sense. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not that talented to make a bad script good. <laughs> I think I just think about my house <laughs> or the trip that I'm, I will be taking when it's over. I don't think there's really not a whole lot you can do with bad words. It, it, there really isn't. I mean, if it's just crap, it's crap. You just really hope it doesn't kill your career. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I mean, before I really had a pot to piss in, I was turning down auditions. I mean, my manager thought I was crazy because I'm like, I'm not going in for this. It's ridiculous. I can't do this. Um, but, well, now that I think about it, ironically, that happens to me on a lot of things, and sometimes they end up, sometimes it's my way of, um, like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm on many tangents, but, like, Nicole Kidman, like, quits every movie that she does the day before filming, apparently, and I think I have a little bit of that neurosis mm -hmm. going on, too. I think so, too. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. So, um, yeah, so, okay, I'm learning about myself, never mind, I'm gonna have this. <laughs> I'll tell, a, a quick, <laughs> I'll tell a quick geek story. The script for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the presentation, not a pilot, it was a presentation halfway, was amazing. And as we were filming it, there was the first AD and the DP and the script supervisor who said, this is unreadable, it'll never be sold, we, uh, we don't care. The DP, he would walk out and have lunch. He'd sort of, I'll oh, put some lights over there and walk away. This will never get made. On and on. You, uh, the, the first AD, breastfed her baby during a scene. You could hear the Velcro rip. <laughs> and the hairdresser and I went to Joss one night and said, I don't care if this goes, we want to be there for you because this is brilliant. And we were the only two hired. <laughs> A good script is a good script. Uh, first off, I just want to thank you all for coming here today. It's great to see you. Uh, my question is for Julie. You had a really long run as Darla, and your final appearance was appearing to Connor as he's about to sacrifice this woman, and this is after you sacrificed yourself. So I was wondering how the writers pitched that scene to you, and if that was supposed to be our understanding that Darla had actually achieved peace. Yeah, um, wow, uh, peace, <laughs> what is that? Um, you know, uh, it doesn't take much to pitch me, you know, to go back on the show, <laughs> it doesn't take much, and they basically just had, they had to say like, hey, do you think you could do, and I'd say, yeah, <laughs> sure. So I was excited to go back and um, see everyone. Um, I think that uh, in many ways, Darla did achieve a certain amount of peace. I mean, she made the decision to take her own life and save her child. So um, I do think that she achieved that. Hi, I just wanted to ask what your favorite episode of either Buffy or Angel was to film and why? Oh, I, was, I thought you were just going to say what your favorite episode was. <laughs> because right, but now it's to film. To film. It's more specific. So I have answers for both, though. So I, there were, I mean, they did some amazing stuff on Buffy that was just so fucking brilliant. Excuse my language. But, uh, Hush was a brilliant episode. <laughs> So it was and I wasn't in any of those, and I just thought it was some of the best television ever made. Um, for me to film, I mean, obviously I'm going to be partial to the episode called Darla. 
<laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, and I also, I loved um, in season, at the end of Angel, my last appearance when I came back um, in the flashback with uh, Juliet and Spike and Angel, and we talked about the one. Yeah. Right, I love doing that. That was fun, because the four of us together, which we didn't get to be together a whole hell of a lot, but when we were together, it was just a blast. Yeah. Okay, to shoot, to actually film. Uh, probably the musical, yeah. 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 That was so much fun, and we actually had I don't even remember, what did we have, like three weeks on that? To do? Yeah, it was, it was a long. Extended. It was a long time, so that was just, that was really cool because we only get eight days usually on anything, so to have, you know, three of eight of those, <laughs> that's 24. Uh, all, all the extras. Yeah, it was, was really, um, that was just fun. It was really challenging and scary, and thank God for auto-tuning. <laughs> <laughs> um, until now to watch like, as a finished product like what's my favorite episode is that your question no, no you asked what to film. film i just jumped you the gun jump. because you can't, <laughs> you can't answer that question without mention those no you're right um oh i don't remember what it's called the one, where they're, the one where they're dreaming <laughs> we know <laughs> <laughs> my slideshow. I've got slides that I don't know what they are. <laughs> I'm going to have to fill in. The, Amazing. <laughs> the greatest change on set happened on those episodes that Joss directed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to say that anything that he directed was, it was top notch. It, there was an excitement amongst the crew that, okay, we're gonna do something special now. So, I mean, Hush, I guess. Hush was amazing. I've often worked 15 hours to 18 hours, sometimes 22 hours a day on that show. The, the Frankenstein makeup took uh, never less than six hours before we started a 14 hour filming day. And you would be amazed at how your attitude changes when you have someone special at the helm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the same reason, my favorite episode to film was the ballet episode. Aww. Because yeah. it was awesome because we were all together like every day. Joss was directing it and I got to kiss Amy. <laughs> She's not here yet. She'll be here enough. Oh, um, my question is, what has been your favorite moment that has come about because of the role scenes played? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Right, exactly. Okay, repeat the question one more time. What has been your favorite moment, like, outside of filming, that has happened because of some of the roles that you've played? Being invited to Dragon Con? Yeah. I mean, we have to pick just one. I mean, I have, like, I don't know, 300... 27 that just flashed through my head. Uh, wow. I mean, I, I think, you know, the best moments, I mean, I mean, there's, there's, you know, great things that we get to do as actors because of roles we played, like, you know, you know, Dexter was nominated for Emmys, I got to go to Emmy Awards, and that was, like, super cool and super glamorous and, like, so much fun. But really, ultimately, I think the best moments are when somebody comes up to me on the street randomly and says, you know, I love your work. And, you know, you really moved me, you made me feel something, um, you changed the way I looked at, at the world, um, or you took me away from the pain I was feeling for, you know, an hour. And I think that's, to me, the most important moments, is those little moments. 
and something great happening at the same time. Just to talk about that a little bit, because you just triggered a memory. I was at a poker table the other night, and um, the dealer goes, you look like a TV star. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool, cool. And he goes, I know, heroes. <laughs> If anybody doesn't know, I was not on Heroes. Although, although the guy who is on Heroes, we actually do look a lot alike. And he doesn't think we look alike, but I know that we look alike because he had a surprise birthday party one time and I showed up late and everybody else surprised. <laughs> So then when people do mistake us sometimes, they, they get all nervous, like, oh my God, I can't believe that I you know, got the wrong person. And I try to let them off the hook. I'm like, no, we really do look alike. But to answer your question, <laughs> okay, in addition to the moment I was telling you about when families come to the table when we're downstairs autographing, I'm always really also moved when a couple comes to the table and they say, you know, we bonded over your show. Like, you know, I liked it and then I got him to like it or he liked it and he got her to like it and then they watched it together. I'm really, I really am moved by that too because I feel, you know, I, I feel like a part of it in a small way. Not in a three way, but in a <laughs> sort of way, you know? So, sorry, but that's, that's, that's the only moment I can think of. What's going on over here? I just realized I was looking at your you do have bling on, right? Because I just saw gold in my... Oh, I do, yeah. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> and I had a bracelet on, and it's gone. Oh, you lost oh. your bracelet? I did. Oh, no. Uh, and anybody, what does it look like? Uh, well, in, I mean, in all fairness, I one. found this in a bathroom. <laughs> Awesome about it is it was um, it's a very spiritual religious wedding and uh, it, it, it clearly has a, there's like a cross on it so it's my my Christian uh, bracelet is now <laughs> so disgusted with having to have been on my my dishonest arm it's finally just rocked. We got really but if you it. find it please give it back to me. <laughs> Do the Christian thing and yeah, give it back to her. I do have a little piece of bling in my own that I wore today that I don't know if Buffy fans will recognize. Can anyone see it? It is, I don't know what it's called. It's the ring that, <laughs> throw it here. It's the ring that uh, allows Angel to walk in the sunlight. It's the real one. Department gave it to me. Hey, hey, I, didn't, I didn't steal it. <laughs> okay, um, I 
I, like I said, I waited the whole way. And it was still there. And that's five hours. It's surely you know your bracelet's missing in five hours. Uh, whatever. <laughs> it was a I'm just trying to misdirect for you. I know. <laughs> anyway. Um, hi. Hi. Um, I'm just such a fan. You guys are all amazing. Um, this is specifically for Emma. Uh, so I personally don't think bunnies are very cute. And um, I, just want to, <laughs> I just want to know if there's actually an animal that you're afraid of. Oh, sharks. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I don't go in the ocean. Yeah. I'll put, like, that's a lie. I have gone in the ocean, but I don't enjoy it. And I, have, I actually got fired off a movie because I couldn't, I couldn't go in the water. <laughs> they wouldn't insure me. <laughs> yeah. I don't like, but I, okay, again, though, they were supposed to shoot in a tank. Like that big Titanic water tank. Yeah. And then something happened with the tank. And I, I had already said that I can't, like, I'll have, like, and they did, and I had, like, a near panic attack. The guy's like, you're going to kill her. Like, get her out of the water. <laughs> and I was just convinced that there were sharks everywhere. It's, just, it's a thing. Although I love them. I love watching them. I love Shark Week. I love, I love learning about them. I think they're, they're magical creatures. I just, I'm absolutely terrified of them. Beyond. Terrified. Which is how I know I'll get eaten by one if I ever actually do go in. It'll find me. Probably not in Atlanta, though. It's okay. I don't know. No, but. Sharknado. <laughs> I love Sharknado. I'm sorry. It's awesome. So bad and so great. Um, but yeah, that's a long winded answer sharks. <laughs> Um, my question is for Todd. Um, I was always amazed at how just on Buffy over seven years, the monsters just never seemed to repeat themselves every time they came out with a new monster. Or so you make think. <laughs> um, it just, they stayed fresh. They always looked different. And just what were the challenges in just keeping them rolling and keeping them, at least to us, um, looking new and different. Well, uh, it's it's very difficult. TV is a difficult medium because you get actors two days before they work. So optic nerve, and I have to preface this: I am a department head makeup artist. That means that I'm on set and I do the beauty makeup and I do the prosthetic painting and application. But there was a lab, and they built the prosthetics. So optic nerve, John Volich's optic nerve, would drop the box of monster parts on my doorstep at three o'clock in the morning as I was getting up to go to work. And I would pick up the box, drive to Santa Monica, and put whatever was in the box on the person. <laughs> so the daily challenge was looking in that box and saying, okay, this piece goes here. <laughs> and, oh, my gosh. oh, they forgot to give us anything to anchor the wig to. So then we'd run to the props department and get the fiberglass drilled with screws so we could put wire on that the wig could go on. It, that was the challenge. The challenge of making it fresh was dealing with stuff that was never fully developed. You never had time. The sculptors at Optic Nerve were brilliant. My job was to look at what they sculpted and say, how can I paint this and bring it to life? And I do remember the, the, um, the minions. Yeah, yeah, the minions, I think that's what they were called. I couldn't figure out how to paint them. I just, I, I had lost all, that was Glory's, Glory's oh. Oh. And there's a cowl and there's a face and almost everything was a cowl and a face and you had to figure out something new to do with it each time. I, I couldn't figure it out so I went wandering around one of the stages we weren't filming on trying to look for inspiration and I found a rolled up old carpet in the back and kicked it over and it had mold growing on it. I said, that's it. <laughs> And that's, if you look at them, they look like they've got mold going on their face. I hope that answers the question. Hi. I was just wondering if there was anything on the Buffy Angel shows that your characters didn't do plot-wise that you wish you had been able to do. Liv. Keep <laughs> 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 Have a heart. 
for a short time, but live, live, just live. Live. <laughs> no, no, I asked to be killed off. I did. I did. Yeah. I thought that would be a great way to go out. I don't know. I thought it was poetic. I don't know. Um, I don't quite understand the lack of quote, giving a shit by everyone else in the show about that. It seems like the characters are like, oh, too bad. So that was like, <laughs> not quite the heroic goodbye that I had envisioned. Um, but I, I would say um, being Spike's girlfriend would have been really fun. <laughs> Well, I always thought that Gunn and Lorne should go out on a mission together. Yeah. I, thought, yeah. I always thought that would have been hilarious, but it would also have been fun for me privately because Andy was the most funny person I've ever known. And uh, to work with him closely would have just been a laugh a minute. So that's one thing that I would have wanted to do. Hey, um, it's such an honor to be here with you guys. Um, my question is for Julie and Emma. Um, how did Joss tell you that you were going to die, and how did you react when you heard it? I already knew. <laughs> I had the inside track on, on that one. I didn't know how. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I didn't know quite how that was going to be executed, but um, it didn't disappoint. So, what? What? Yes. That's what I meant. Yes, I was. I was doing that. Um, so I was, I was, I was geared up. I was ready. It was, it was awesome. I'm sorry. I know it was made me want to be sad. Like, yeah, I'm gonna get killed. What? What? It was the last episode, so it's true. Like, yeah. You know. Anyway, it was my fault. So don't do it again. <laughs> Um, Darla was always meant to die. She was meant to die in the pilot. Yeah. yeah. Vampire girl number one, I think. Yeah. 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 And, um, and she, and you know, I remember Joss came to set and he's like, we're not going to kill you today. <laughs> we're going to bring you back next episode. And then I was supposed to die then. And the same thing, came to set, we're not going to kill you today. <laughs> um, so when they finally did kill her in, in Buffy, I mean, it was just, I just knew she was always going to die. I mean, she had to die. It, was, it didn't make any sense. She had to go. Um, what I didn't believe is when they said they were going to bring me back to life. Um, I remember running into uh, David on the Paramount lot, and he's like, Ben's, we're bringing you back. And I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> and he's like, no, we are. And then they sent me the script, and I read it, and um, I got to almost the very end, and I was like, well, where's Darla? You know? And then I get to the final page, and she's naked in the box. <laughs> But, you know, she was never meant to stick around. She was always meant to die. But every time they killed me, I will tell you, I took it, like, I took it really hard, and, like, I would, I'd get really upset and emotional, and I'd say goodbye to the crew, and the cast, and I'd hug everybody, and they'd give me flowers. But then everybody'd be like, oh, you'll be back next week. <laughs> and it was true, but I would, like, every time I'm like, no, no, this time, this time is it. Like, you know, I poofed. <laughs> and I'm like, you'll be back. So, but I always thought, you know, she was always meant to die. Bobby. Hi, um, first I wanted to introduce my son, who's um, Charles Alexander. I've actually met Day August before. Um, after Charles Gunn and oh. Alexander Harris. And had he been a girl, he was going to be Emma Anda. Oh. So, um, but, hey, Charles. Say hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hi. My question is, in regards to this, what is the creepiest thing a fan has ever done? <laughs> Can't tell that story. <laughs> Charles present. Um, <laughs> Okay, so, jeez, I mean, that story just trumps all stories, so it's hard to find the second story. So you probably won't follow it, so you can... 
let's just say <laughs> it involved a newsstand um, and a woman who was in one of the magazines that you can't access unless you're 18. <laughs> I mean, it, it ends there, <laughs> that, you know, but it, it had to do with someone introducing themselves and showing me said magazine at the same time. <laughs> I'm so sorry, children. <laughs> I apologize. I was goaded into that one. Okay. Hi. Oh, shit. Are we not answering that? I'm sorry. Again. Um, I'm pretty sure this woman in London put like. Well, I mean, I don't believe in them, but I mean, she did. And she meant it. And she was like. Curse you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, just like so taken aback by that. And, 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 and all because I was leaving and she wanted to buy me a drink. And I, I'm like, I just paid. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. And I just turned. <laughs> and I, aggressively. And it was just like the eyes and the pointing. Like, oh my God. I'm so glad I didn't let you buy me a drink. <laughs> Benjamin Steven. What? She was a Benjamin Steven. <laughs> We're not as bad as she. <laughs> Did you have your magic bracelet protecting you? No, just myself. Yeah. Just my my badass aura. Oh, you mean the bracelet? Yeah, that I were you wearing it then? Yeah. No, no, no. This uh, is recent, which is yeah. the one I didn't steal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Found. I think, I mean, like, I mean, I, I haven't had that many creepy fans. Um, no, I haven't. Um, I sometimes wish I had. <laughs> but I haven't. I think the, the creepiest thing was I was at a con one time and some guy wanted me to sign his underwear and he literally like pulled his pants down and his underwear like was dirty and they had holes in them. That was just disgusting. I mean, that was it. I mean, you know, that was the only one. <laughs> But uh, other than that, I've had very lovely experiences. You know, I left out an important detail about that story. <laughs> <laughs> the magazine in question was not a magazine that that many would enjoy. It was, uh, it was. Uh, Just say the name. It was a niche magazine. It was a niche magazine. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like it would be. It's one of those things you might want to like, you know, know somebody before they show you them <laughs> doing this particular thing. <laughs> Uncomfortable, yeah. maybe meet someone at the same time you're seeing what I saw. Okay, enough about that. <laughs> okay, um, hi. I'll be their doctor. That's exactly what I want to follow up. Um, okay, now, uh, Emma, the first character I ever related to on television was Anya. Like, I'd never seen anybody that reminded me of myself and how I, I was socially at all. And I was just wondering for all of you guys, what character on Buffy or Angel or, or really any Joss Whedon thing gave you the most insight into yourself? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what character on a Joss Whedon related project gave you the most insight into yourself? So it does obviously not your character. Unless it was. Unless it was, okay. <laughs> Just clarify. For all of you. Okay. Why do you always look at me to go first? I do that. I'm so sorry. Oh, I mean, I'm gonna say Darla. I mean, <laughs> only because I mean, at the time, um, you know, I was fresh out of college, and I felt like every day on set um, that I got to be on the Buffy Angel set was like being in graduate school, and I learned so much about acting. I learned more about acting working on that show than I did at my fancy pants you know, NYU, uh, very expensive acting school that I went to. And um, so I really just felt I learned so much about my craft and about me in the craft and my approach and other people's approaches. And 
just, you know, every day was a challenge. I mean, I'd get a phone call saying, um, we're gonna have you sing next week. <laughs> or, you're gonna ride a horse through fire. <laughs> or, we're gonna bury you alive. And so I got to face a lot of my fears. <laughs> All three of those. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just, it was an amazing experience for me. So Darla really gave me a lot of insight into myself. Um, you know, um, I would say, I guess, I guess playing on you, but only because we're not, we're not alike, but more because I just had, I don't know, you inhabit someone like that for that long and you, you just learn things about yourself, I guess. You learn what you're capable of doing with boundaries, I don't know, that kind of thing. I'm, I, I more learned about myself by, you know, Agent Mulder. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really honest about life. Um, but I, yeah. I always loved Giles, too. I thought he was such a wonderful character. And very loyal and willing to just, I don't know, have faith in that. I don't know. Anyway, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. <laughs> I think it's a very different thing for an actor who actually inhabits a role and has to create the differences between who they are and who the role is and find the pieces of themselves that fit the role and then stretch to the pieces that don't fit the role. That's not something a crew member ever does. I, from my point of view, my job is to help the actors and the directors create their role. And in some cases, the makeup does that. Sometimes the makeup is a major part of that. I would say that working with uh, James Marsters was one of the most interesting experiences <laughs> for an actor who actually integrated the makeup and felt that he didn't really need to act because the makeup did it for him. That was a really great compliment. So in answer to your question, what I learn most about myself is what I see the actors going through in learning about themselves and their characters. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really great cool after such an intelligent answer. Um, I mean, the only thing that I'm coming up with is that I can only just say that, I mean, I'm not answering your question directly, but I will say that I learn so much about acting from Alexis Denisoff. Um, I, I just, I really, I watched him very closely and he's very good, obviously. And um, I've stolen a lot from him that I've learned over the years. Um, I just learned a lot about how to be specific and how to be specific with your movement and match your movement. Like watching him was an acting class in a lot of ways. Uh, let's go back to that creepiest question. <laughs> okay, so my question is, can you describe the moment when you knew your involvement with this project, be it Angel or Buffy, was just magical, when you knew that it was something much bigger than yourself? Um, I'm going to start. See, I was going to say, I was doing everything in my power not to look now, at you. Now I just have to start because you like kind of, it's like the, what's that Pavlov? Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 now I have to start. Um, you know, uh, my very first convention, I was flown to London and I was supposed to be the surprise guest. And they were acting all like secretive, like sneaking me into the back of the hotel, you know, making me stay in my room so nobody would see me. And I'd be like, guys, no one's going to know who I am. I had only done just those like handful of episodes on Buffy like that was it and I thought that they were all acting weird um, <laughs> and I remember when they brought me downstairs and they announced me as their surprise guest and I walked into this giant hall of people and everyone was like on their feet clapping and cheering and I honestly thought like nobody would they'd be like who Julie who like what Darla like you know so I just didn't understand the um the the love that people had for Darla after just a handful of episodes. Uh, well, I think I realized that there was a I was a part of a um, much larger fandom, or a you know just that kind of 
I don't know, cult, I hate using that word, but it is, it's kind of culty. Um, you know, when you, when you realize you're like Julia Roberts in Blackpool <laughs> in England, <laughs> like this is the middle of nowhere and I'm, uh, uh, oh, I'm like suddenly the most ridiculous, famous person, I'm like I, I'm not at all, I, I am not at all, but in there I was, I thought okay. And that was really early on. I was like, like her, I'm like I don't understand what's going on. Um, but the actual, the legs, sort of, um, how it continues to expand instead of contract in terms of its popularity. Um, I never, ever in a million years thought that that was going to be essentially a Star Trek. I had no idea that that's what this show. Or any any of I mean I was never on any of the other ones, but um, just at least with Buffy, no, I no clue at all. But I do now. I mean, I definitely, I definitely know, and uh, and it's really unique. It's again very weird having been such a huge fan, of so many different culty shows to be a part of one. Yeah. Well, you, the, um, the presentation was shot very cheap, and as I told you, most people didn't think it was going anywhere. And the wardrobe was really bad. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you remember the stuntman who just sort of ripped their appliances off yeah. the other day and went home? It was, it was weird. It was a very strange project. <laughs> And then we got the call that it had been picked up, and the, the thing was it was a mid-season replacement. So for the entire time we shot the first season, not a single episode aired. We were in a vacuum, and we didn't know if we were making something that was going to be forgotten two weeks later, or something that was going to be special. And it wasn't until we were into the second season and the first season's airing that this wave of interest happened. And I remember distinctly knowing we were somewhere special when I was walking in a mall somewhere with my Bucky Crew jacket on and someone ran up to me and started offering me money for that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> now we're in something special. You know, it was surprising too because when we started, WB wasn't even a real network. No. It wasn't even like nationwide yet. Like, I remember my parents didn't have the channel, so they didn't even know what the show was, and, you know, they couldn't even watch it. So it was just tiny little thing that just exploded. I remember Joss standing up on the stage of that gymnasium and saying, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> if any of you can help me direct this, help me. It was really interesting. I'm going to tell you the exact moment when I figured out exactly what was going on. It was very similar. I was at a convention in London, except for our surprise guest that time was Joss. So we were all in London chilling. We were having a great time. Everybody was having a good time. So they were now announcing us, the actors, coming on stage. And, you know, one by one, we're going on stage and getting a really great response. And they say, well, we have a very special guest, Joss Whedon. And the room goes insane. <laughs> And he comes and stands next to me, and I go, oh, you're the star of the show. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I knew what I was doing. <laughs> Hi. So um, after learning that Todd is wearing the Gem of Amara, it made me curious what proper caution piece might have gone home with the rest of you, or you <laughs> wish. <laughs> I'll start this one. <laughs> my thievery has been well documented. It was actually my first tweet. I actually got away with my battle axe. My I got away with that. And that was my very first tweet ever. And I figured it had been so many years they weren't going to come after it. So, so I took that. I took um, some business cards. Business cards. And I took my watch, this watch that I always wore but never showed on the air for some reason. So those are my three souvenirs. And a, and a couple other costume pieces. You know the props people answered for that, right? No, well, well, they gave it to me, actually. Okay. I never got anything, and I never took anything. Aww. Except that bracelet. Um, I didn't take anything and they never gave me anything, but if they could have given me something, I would have taken that, um, that corset 
<laughs> that thing was, it was uncomfortable and painful, but oh my god, I was so good in that. <laughs> century whalebone corset. Like I couldn't sit, I couldn't pee, I couldn't eat, I couldn't do any, I could barely walk to set. The poor PA who would take me to set, I would have to stop every couple of steps because I couldn't even breathe. Like, and he'd be like, we should loosen it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> we don't loosen this. We don't. My waist is so tiny right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> Hi, I met three of you today. Um, I didn't meet Todd, hello. Um, uh, so this is for Julie and Emma. Uh, so Darla was also the uh, vicious vampire and then she also shared a soul with Connor. And Anya was the infamous vengeance demon and she was also the sweet candor, Anya, that we all know and love. Um, so did you prefer playing like the evil sort of character or the kind-hearted good guy? Uh, uh, Darla was never fully kind-hearted. <laughs> I mean, she was trying to kill that baby for a while. <laughs> it wasn't until the very end that she realized that she needed to kill herself. But um, uh, I think, I mean, I think the biggest question really for me was, so when they brought me back in season two, I was playing Darla in the very beginning I still thought she was a vampire, and I remember like two episodes and Joss came to me and he goes, we're gonna make you human. And I'm like, what do you mean? I've been playing her like a vampire. And he's like, no, you're human now. And I was really bummed out, because I was like, I wanna be a vampire, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be bad. And then, so I was human, and then I was, made, I was, I was really enjoying being a, like a human for a moment. And then they made me a vampire again. And I was like, no, I don't want to be a vampire. I'm a human. Like, come on. So I was never happy. <laughs> but I like, I personally prefer playing characters that are deeply flawed. And Darla definitely was deeply flawed. And that's what I love. Yeah, I have to agree with you on the deeply flawed thing. I, why is this so far away? It's so weird. Um, uh, yeah, I, the more sort of screwed up, the better. Um, and I did not like, as much as I appreciate Todd's handiwork, I was never a fan of, of the, of the, uh, all that crap. <laughs> I, uh, we were just reliving my neck issues, my neck issues, and I'd forgotten that I was always, gra I mean, even talking about it, I start to get like this, like I just... I was very uncomfortable um, in that makeup, so uh, actually I think probably my favorite time is sort of trying to be bad while being, while looking human. That was interesting. Um, she's, she's such a complicated character, so she was always kind of everything at once and does her sort of confusion all the time. Um, yeah. So, Emma, I watched the show because of you, or specifically because of Anya, um, because a bunch of my friends kept telling me, you need to watch the show, there's this character with your name, and that never happens. So, um, and the thing that I wound up loving about Anya was her blunt, like, um, awkward <laughs> moments where she was really funny unintentionally. Yeah. And so I was wondering, well, for all of you, um, what lines or moments on the show were the most enjoyable for you to, uh, to, to perform, and what moments were the most difficult? You want me to start? I'll start. I'll start. I'll start. Okay. Um, I loved when I brought Angel the baby to eat. <laughs> but we could, not, we could not get through that scene without dying laughing. And because just the ridiculousness of it. And they, they cast the cutest little baby you've ever seen. And he's sitting in the cooing away and like looking at us and smiling. And we're just like, we're going to eat this thing. <laughs> So, I mean, that was probably the most difficult moment to get through, because the baby was just so cute, and we just were like, this is absurd. <laughs> um, my favorite moment was when I took out the cross and I burned it into Angel's chest, and I said, God doesn't want you, but I still do. Because that, to me, was the key into Darla. That was like, it was like, if I can't have you, no one can. <laughs> you know, so, that was my favorite. Like a favorite line? Tell you? Yeah. 
Uh, I liked I liked when Anya asked it. You know, what if I'm nobody? I really that was really kind of the heart of all of that. I mean, that was that was her really in every way. That was really her. And then I think. You know, one of those other reasons I thought that that would be really nice to have her go out, like doing something beyond herself, being somebody. Um, my, you know, in my twisted mind, like you're somebody when you kill yourself. Uh, <laughs> no, not kill yourself, like off, whatever. Um, and favorite line, I don't actually remember any of the lines specifically, there, but there was something about trading kids in for cash that I thought was really funny. <laughs> I like that quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Someone I'm sure knows the exact line. Probably all of you. Uh, what? Yes. Yes. What did I say? Can I trade my children in for more money? No, it was cash. Wasn't it cash? Can I trade the children in for more cash? There we go. Yeah. I love that. Anyway, both, both those things. <laughs> you know, Joss was such a great writer that you know, we couldn't wait for the scripts to come. For those of us in the, the crew, when we would sit there and hoard them because we weren't supposed to show the actors the scripts when we got them. And we'd go through and we'd start laughing. And they would always find us because we'd be in the corner with a white script laughing. <laughs> you didn't hide very well. I, mean, <laughs> I have to let you know that. <laughs> I do remember, though, thinking when I won my Emmy for Buffy that I had to say something. And I stole Cordelia's line in the bar where she says, I have to call everyone I ever met right now. <laughs> my uh, favorite, was it favorite or difficult? Okay, difficult. Well, difficult and rewarding and triumphant for me was doing the scene with myself in the white room. Not yeah. because it was not because I was playing two characters, but because Joss was also directing that episode. And um, you know, when 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 Joss sees something in your performance, he likes to give birth to things that you might not be fully giving birth to. And so he was riding me during that scene, you know, and he was really pushing me and really pressing me to get something special out of the non-Charles Gunn character. And uh, when we found it. I knew what was, I knew. We found it, and he leapt ten foot feet out of his chair and was so excited. And uh, that was probably my most triumphant moment, yeah. if you will. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah. So I think we're about to get wrapped up. So yeah, we're we have a, a giveaway, right? There's this book that was written by Amy Pascal. It's called Joss Whedon: The Biography. Excellent. Uh, yeah, here's very excellent. I haven't had a chance to read it myself yet. Actually, I'm not going to give it away. I'm joking. So, I want to give this out to somebody, um, and I'm going to just do a really random and quick contest. And if you know the answer, shout it out very quickly, and let's all be fair, whoever says it first. What is the name of the final episode of Angel? Not fair way! Not fair way! Okay, I heard a female voice over not here. Okay, way. here you go. And she's dressed as the Bucky Bot right now. <laughs> 